Why water is no more a third gift of nature? Can you easily find around a catchment which is undisturbed or natural? River anthropization is the feedback or the anathem distribution of freshwater availability throughout planet Earth. I will stress only one issue here, the fundamental role of solid water and the high sensitivity of these waters, snowfall, glaciers, and permafrost. And the key location, the Himalayan range. Major attention is paid to liquid and vapor water, but one should notice that icing, melting and sublimation, that is, those phase changes involved in solid water, play a fundamental role in the hydrologic cycle. Large river systems are snow-fed and billions of people rely on these rivers. The amount and distribution of solid water is strongly affected by climate fluctuation currently occurring at a high rate of change. Permafrost dynamics has a fundamental role in the global water cycle as well. Non-stationarity is very ill. Stationarity, the exception. The effort of understanding periodic and theoretic fluctuations should require a combined deterministic and stochastic approach. One should increase current mathematical knowledge to approach a large number of process variables relying on small observed samples. Nature is non-stationary, and humanity is non-stationary as well. Everybody knows that population is increasing, but it does not increase everywhere. Conversely, Total water withdrawal increases everywhere. Somewhere is due to the increase of population. Somewhere is due to increase the wealth. Somewhere both factors increase withdrawal. Conversely, Renewable water availability has a different geography. And the availability of renewable water is decreasing everywhere with increasing population density. Note that urban population is increasing much and much faster than total population. Look at the urban population there's a total population. Look at the trend. In year 2050, two-thirds people will live in urban areas. This means six billion people. But all these people will rely on much less water resources than their grandparents because renewable water is strongly decreasing with increasing urban population. Look at the renewable water versus urban population. Look at the trend. We are close to another of sides in 50 years. Can we afford an order of size in one century? Modern cities 
display increasing vulnerability to flood risk. Here you can see the last flood disaster occurred in a large city, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, April this year, 2010. If you look at media, you can retry one large flood disaster per month on average in last year. For instance, in Buenos Aires, there was a flood in February 2010. This is the high current rate of destructive flood occurrence for the cities of the world. However, the flood has a different impact on city headquarters and its suburbs, especially the slums, as well as rich and poor people can suffer a quite different impact of floods. Istanbul is a city that provides a paradigm of Eastern and Western culture. Here there is the rendering of the Constantinople Basilica Cistern, a terrific example of water architecture. It was the municipal water storage facility of the Valence Aqueduct, dating about 500 years after Christ. Water plays a fundamental role for this city, starting from its development by Emperor Constantine the Great. In this slide you get an idea of the evolution of Istanbul population from year 330 after Christ to Istanbul nowadays. Sixteenth century were needed to move from 400,000 in year 400 to 1 million people in year 1900. 70 years from 1 to 2 million in 1970. 40 years from 2 million to 13 million in year 2010. Water plays a key role in Istanbul. From the Roman Age aqueducts to the Kyrkesme water supply systems built by Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent in the mid of the 16th century, the government paid much care in supplying fresh waters to the people. Note that the Turkish bath is not an opinion. The German Kaiser William II made the gift of a German fountain in year 1900. Now you can see the fountain in Sultan Metzpur. He made the gift in order to gain the friendship of the Ottoman Empire under the business of building the Baghdad Railway. Now, the great Menon system will supply more than 1 billion cubic meters of water per year to Istanbul by conveying Asian waters of Melan River, which is about 180 kilometers east of Istanbul. This is really the paradigm of Bridgen's device for water, Asia to Europe. However, European waters are not sufficient to supply Istanbul, but they are enough to flood the city as it occurred in September 2009. The estimated damage was 100 million euros. The death toll was more than 30. Floods in Istanbul bring calls for better urban planning because poor urban planning is one of the major causes of the catastrophic impact of that flood. Can urban planning go back to find solutions? The hanging gardens in Babylon date five centuries before Christ. Was it an aesthetic matter only? All around the world, architecture has discovered the geniality of roof gardens. The efficiency in reducing the flood peak after heavy storms 
ranges from 60 to 80 percent. Argon climate is positively influenced by the modified fluxes between soil and atmosphere. Hydrology is fundamental to assess these conjectures and to provide guidelines. Note that the roof gardens are not designed by nature, but understanding the design of nature can help to ameliorate the response of huge modern cities to climate and water cycle. These roof gardens are not only an aesthetic issue, but they can also play a fundamental role in local ideological control with a perspective of producing food to be eaten locally. I know that rooftop agriculture is still confined to fed high-quality snob restaurants, but one should consider it a non-trivial contribution to new lifestyle, aware of the ecological footprint. Note that in year 1835, one-third of vegetables in France were produced within the boundaries of Paris. So, the citizen rejected the proposal of a modern sewage system by King Louis Philippe in order to preserve wastewaters for irrigation. <laughs>